I'm going to talk about the South African chapter. This uh, paper was written together with uh, our chair, Haroon, and two of our other colleagues um, uh, listed here on the slide. So the main kind of idea of this uh, chapter is to highlight some of the important trends um, in terms of demographics, em labor market, employment, and wages in South Africa. So there are a few key um, trends that I'm going to highlight, but the presentation will focus on point number four, which is the role of the public sector in employment. So just to give you some background and context to the South African economy, we see that um, the slide shows the kind of real GDP growth rates in South Africa over time, and it's not necessarily one of the very fast-growing emerging uh, kind of market economies in Africa, but it has seen kind of moderate and consistent growth rates, particularly in the first decade um, after democracy. Since the kind of 2009 recession, growth, however, has been um, quite slow. And so in some senses, I think South Africa exhibits some characteristics of being in a middle-income country trap. So there's kind of low, moderate levels of economic growth, a high levels of unemployment, and very high levels of inequality. Um, so it's kind of against this backdrop then that this paper tries to highlight some of the important trends that we think are affecting the South African labor market. In terms of the economic structure, this shows uh, the kind of composition of GDP in South Africa. And we see that already in 1994, South Africa was a service-oriented economy. However, we had kind of substantial shares of mining and manufacturing uh, contributing to output. By 2014, we see that the economy has increasingly then been driven by service uh, sectors. So some of the fast-growing service sectors have been transport, storage, and communications, the financial sector, and wholesale and retail trade. Therefore, we, you know, we can say that the economy is uh, essentially a service-driven economy. So in terms of poverty and inequality, um, according to a kind of World Bank $2 a day poverty line, we do see that poverty has reduced since 1995 or 94, but it's kind of remained um, fairly high at about 26%. Um, I guess one of the key kind of mediating factors in preventing this poverty rate from reducing further has been the very high levels of inequality. So as many of you may know about the South African society, the Gini coefficient is estimated somewhere around 0.65, so extremely high. Um, and underpinning this kind of inequality is a labor market that's really been unable to absorb a large proportion of the labor force. So the unemployment rate, using a very narrow definition, is at about 25%. For the youth, this is substantially higher. Um, and I guess the state has kind of stepped in to try and mitigate some of these um, challenges by implementing a comprehensive social welfare system. So there is research that shows that the social transfers in South Africa have been quite effective at reducing market inequality that would be even higher than reported here. So I'm going to touch on the, this uh, demographic transition and not go into too much detail. But essentially what we see in South Africa is that in the kind of late 1990s, early 2000s, there was a rapid growth in the, labor, in the size of the labor force, which was primarily driven by increasing participation rates, as opposed to increases in the working age population. So therefore, we've seen that unemployment growth has been unable uh, to kind of keep up with the rapid growth in the labor force. So this is slightly different to many of the other African economies um, that we see and some that were presented here and that we do not expect to see rapid growth of the working age population in South Africa. In fact, the country is quite some way along its demographic transition. So estimates using the UN uh, kind of population statistics show that the working age population is expected to remain at between 65 and 67 percent um, for the next kind of decade or two. Um, these are just some estimates that our co-author did that shows uh, essentially that South Africa is already kind of um, far along this period where there's expected to be a demographic dividend, so some kind of growth benefit from population change. South Africa is already in the portion of the curve where it's declining. Um, 
So let's get into some of the key trends that we highlight then uh, for the labor market. This table shows the um, main sectors in South Africa and the kind of absolute and relative growth in employment as well as employment shares. And the key takeaway here, um, kind of highlighted by the colored uh, boxes, is that over this 10 year period that we look at, uh, this data is also a little bit dated, but um, we see the primary, uh, the, where the job losses are concentrated are in the primary sector. So agriculture um, and to some extent mining as well. The sources of employment growth in the South African economy then are primarily from the tertiary sector. So here we've highlighted the financial sector as well as uh, what's called the community social and personal services, which then is primarily made up of the public sector. So again, in terms of the structural change, we see that according to output, employment is also being generated primarily by services. The second important trend has been um, the increasing use of temporary employment services. So this is also called uh, labor brokers in South Africa. And these are uh, employment services where workers are then contracted out to firms. So they're like third party employers. And it's a little difficult to estimate this given the labor force surveys, but you, it's kind of hidden within a category within the financial sector, kind of a you know, um, unclassified uh, item. And we see that the TS employment as a proportion of financial sector employment has risen from about 27% to about 47% in more recent years. And as a proportion of total employment has also gone up to, you know, between six and 7%. So some of the main kind of job activities within this TS sector are things like protective services, farm hands, uh, helpers and cleaners. So low and some medium skilled uh, type jobs. Mm, and essentially the benefit, you know, to firms is that they are able to circumvent some of the um, kind of labor regulations in South Africa. So the debate in South Africa is that um, this mechanism is used to overcome some of the labor market rigidities. However, when we've kind of looked at the indicators of labor market rigidity and compared them to other similar countries, um, we find that in terms of non-wage labor costs and indices uh, relating to firing costs, South Africa is, is not really substantially higher than other middle income countries or upper middle income countries. One aspect of rigidity is perhaps in the difficulty of hiring workers. But again, um, it doesn't seem to be overwhelming evidence that the labor market is too rigid. So then the third uh, important trend is related to um, skills-biased labor demand. So this fits in very well with the, the sectoral shifts, I think. Because again, what we highlight here then is if we kind of disaggregate the sectoral employment by a skill type, we see that again, the job losses within the primary sector are again concentrated in low skilled and medium skilled occupations. Um, where uh, employment is being generated in the tertiary sector, it's then you know, more in the high skilled and medium skilled uh, type occupations. And this is particularly concerning in the South African context, given the kind of highly unequal education system in terms of quality. And this has been one of the legacies of the apartheid system uh, and I think continues to, to be prevalent in South Africa today, where a large proportion of, of high school graduates perhaps do not have uh, adequate uh, level of skill in terms of quality of education. So then the main uh, kind of focus of the paper moves on to the role of the public sector in employment. So one of the, the trends that we've highlighted is that um, in terms of the share of employment in South Africa, we see that the public sector employment has risen um, from about 14.5% um, in 2008 to about 17.5% in 2014. So it seems to be a source of, of employment growth in the South African labor market and also perhaps suggest, uh, suggests that the state has stepped in, particularly in 2009 at a time of labor market crisis, to cushion the effects um, of the global recession. And post 2009, employment growth has been slow. 
So perhaps the state has continued to play this role um, since then. In terms of um, the composition of this increase in employment, this graph uh, essentially shows that for the change, uh, net change in public sector jobs in the post-2008 period, um, these are the occupations that uh, kind of contributed to that change. Mm, the fastest growing public sector occupations are then uh, quite, a, quite a few low-skilled occupations. Um, there's sweepers, cleaners, um, other types of helpers, as well as some medium-skilled occupations. So you have kind of police officers, uh, primary education teachers, home-based uh, care workers as well. So we're trying to kind of uh, go a little deeper to figure out, you know, what are the differences then between the public and, and private sector employment. And this table compares worker characteristics between these two sectors. And uh, when we refer to the private sector, it's the formal non-agricultural uh, private sector. And essentially what we find then is that public sector workers are on average older, um, there's also a larger proportion of uh, women that work in the public sector relative to the private sector. And there's a larger proportion of Africans working in the public sector relative to the private sector. And this is important because it also shows that the state has been able to transform um, its workforce uh, at a faster rate than the private sector, as these are kind of two previously disadvantaged groups in South Africa. Um, the Public sector workers are also kind of have a higher average uh, level of education measured by years of schooling. And they are substantially um, higher um, proportion of unionized workers in the public uh, sector. In terms of the kind of occupational distribution, um, it seems that the public sector has a slightly more compressed occupational distribution. So not as many workers right at the, the top end and also not as many workers uh, at the bottom kind of uh, occupational levels. An important and interesting trend then within this uh, whole context of rising public sector employment has also been a rapidly rising public sector union density. And what's also interesting here is that the private sector has shown kind of the completely opposite trend in South Africa. So the private sector union density has declined uh, since 1997, whereas the public sector um, union density has increased. So kind of the latest estimates we have is about 70% of public sector workers uh, belong to a union. So we want to then compare the wage distributions between the public and private sector to estimate a kind of wage premium. And this is a simple plot of the wage distributions between these two sectors. And it seems that on average, uh, you know, both median and mean wages in the public sector are, are higher than the private sector. Um, if we then disaggregate these distributions by union status, we see that for non-unionized workers, it seems that this wage premium doesn't really exist. However, for unionized workers, there's still uh, higher average uh, wages in the public sector relative to the private sector. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to explain in too much detail what we do, but it's a standard kind of um, two-stage Heckman employment model to estimate the wage premium in the public sector. So in the first stage, we correct for um, selection into the labor market and then estimate a standard earnings function. And this is the main table of results uh, from our analysis. And what we get out of this is then, you know, in the first two specifications, we just merely control for union status. And what we see there then is that there is no average public sector wage premium. Um, however, there is a positive and significant union uh, premium. However, when you interact union status with either public uh, and private sector employment, we see that for the unionized public sector worker, there is a, a positive and substantial wage premium. And this holds true when we separate out public sector employment into government and state-owned enterprises. In terms of, uh, sorry, I should add that we've obviously controlled for all worker characteristics and, uh, you know, done the usual kind of um, diagnostic tests. In terms of magnitude then, what we see is that in this interactive, interacted specification, 
for non-unionized workers is actually a wage penalty for working in the public sector of about 18.5% on average. But for unionized public sector workers, there's a positive and significant wage premium of about 21%. So therefore, when you control for TES employment, there's kind of no average uh, public sector uh, wage premium. However, belonging to a union then results in a significant and large um, public sector wage premium. And I think this is kind of something new and interesting um, that's perhaps been looked at a little more in recent years. We've essentially done the same thing uh, across the wage distribution, running these quantile regressions, and we find that the premium uh, for unionized workers is consistent across the wage distribution, and it's highest at the median worker. The wage penalty for non-unionized workers seems to also exist um, kind of across the wage distribution. So we've also then, I guess, you know, from this try to model a labor market segmentation model, kind of using simple multinomial logit uh, kind of function. And I think it confirms our result that there is this uh, wage wedge between the unionized public sector worker and the, the rest of the kind of formal uh, economy in South Africa. And the segmentation model also then confirms that there are distinct <coughs> characteristics as distinctly different characteristics um, of workers in the public and the private sectors. So to conclude then, I think um, what we see in the South African economy and the labor market is that both gro output growth and employment growth is increasingly being generated by the services sector. There is also then a rise in the use of, of labor brokers. Um, we also then highlight this kind of important rising share of public sector workers in employment, uh, along with this idea that for the unionized public sector worker, there's a significant wage premium. So it starts to suggest that perhaps in the post-2000 era, there's been uh, a new labor market elite in South Africa, the unionized public sector employee. Um, and I think for us, this is particularly worrying uh, in a context where there's an um, unequal education system where firms are, are trying to avoid direct employment, um, where manufacturing has essentially stagnated and the share of manufacturing and employment has declined. I think um, this new trend is particularly worrying. Um, Haroon presented some updated work uh, two days ago and I think it also confirms this idea that if you look at wage growth across the, the distribution, you see a hollowing out in the middle of the distribution. So essentially there's some wage growth right at the bottom, which is attributed to minimum wages, and then wage gro growth right at the top. And we think that part of this is the public sector wage uh, premium. Um, so yeah, I think there's some important and difficult um, problems ahead in the South African labor market.